Hi, everybody. This is Tanis Tarani, your international career strategist. And today I have a special guest, Nadia. She works in Switzerland. Well, she is from Switzerland. And today she's going to talk about how is the market, how is to work in Switzerland and give all the help and tips in regards to that because she is an expert in LinkedIn as well. We we used to work together at LinkedIn, right? <laughs> five years ago. She was like, oh my God, it's been five years ago. I don't see you. And I was like, oh my God, five years ago. <sighs> Time flies. How are you, Nadia? Oh, good. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't want to. <laughs> Thank you. The first time is always awkward. The first video is always awkward. <laughs> Um, well, thank you, Jana. I'm doing great, and uh, it's really a pleasure to to speak with you tonight. I, I don't think it's the night for you, uh, but in Switzerland, it's the night right now, and uh, it's it's really yeah, really nice uh, indeed. It's been five years; we haven't seen each other, but I, I can't believe that you know I'm on your platform now. This is really an honor. <laughs> thank you very much, <laughs> Nadia. Tell everybody, introduce yourself. So, who is Nadia? So what, what's your background? Right, so I'm Nadia. Um, I am from Switzerland, uh, from the French speaking part. So about me, uh, I studied economics here in Switzerland and then uh, I did a master's uh, in international management in Istanbul, Turkey, and uh, also completed it in Sydney, Australia. Uh, after that, yeah, after that, I uh, started working. I, I did um, many different jobs in many different countries, but just to, to, to give you like a quick uh, snapshot, uh, I did event management in Paris, and then I worked at LinkedIn uh, <laughs> together with Tana in Dublin. Uh, there, of course, I learned a lot about the LinkedIn platform in general. I was uh, very lucky to get an experience as a recruiter as well. Uh, then I did some uh, enterprise support and finally sales. Um, and after that, I moved back to Paris uh, where I did um, corporate relations for uh, uh, an academic organization before moving back to Switzerland finally. Um, and it's been now three years uh, <laughs> and currently wow. uh, I am not employed at an organization anymore because I am starting my very own business. Yay! <laughs> so exciting! <laughs> <laughs> very good. So tell um, all the job seekers and professionals that are watching us how is the switzerland market how is to work in switzerland all the nuances and differences that you you know um uh, spot spotted you know like when you were working at uh, linkedin in dublin because i'm sure there are differences in relation to cv in relation to interview to uh cultural cultural differences for absolutely. sure absolutely all right, so where to start? Indeed, like every country has their own uh, specificities. But yeah, uh, for Switzerland, I'd say um, it is like in general a very competitive market because mm -hmm. the living standards are quite high in Switzerland. So it, uh, yeah, it is attractive for Swiss people, of course, but also for foreigners. Yeah. Uh, and for this reason, as you know it, like same in Dublin and the same in, in many, many uh, different countries and cities, whenever a place is attractive, you need to bring your A game in order yeah. to, you know, get that interview and eventually get that job. Yeah. So, uh, in order to do so, I have like a few um, recommendations for you. Or, yeah, maybe before we, we jump into like the specifics of the, the CV and yeah. our letter, there is maybe just one thing that's very important. When yes. you want to work in Switzerland, you um, <clears throat> you need to get a work permit first. That's, that's a very important thing. So if okay. you are a Swiss citizen, well, it's fine. If you are part of the EU and... Um, 
yeah the sorry i'm gonna reset this sentence yeah so if you are part of the eu it's also like quite easy to, to get a work permit however you need to be like that person that the company really needs and uh, that ah, i'm gonna reset the whole thing i'm sorry <laughs> no it can go back don't worry so first, right. first thing you, ha you need to get a visa right yes um all right so not necessarily so if you are a swiss na national uh, of course you're good to apply for for any jobs in switzerland yeah then if you are in the eu um it's not necessarily a visa that you need because you can uh, freely move uh mm -hmm. around countries and also yeah. enter into switzerland however you will need a work permit and this work permit will be delivered to you if uh, the company you apply for decides to hire you they really want you because they're unable to find like uh the best talent for them within the country okay so yeah so that's that's something to keep in mind and if you are outside of the eu and switzerland then it gets a little bit tricky because you can still get a job but then the company really needs to prove that you are the only person that can do that job mm. and not able to find anyone within switzerland or the eu okay understand yeah. is there so, any uh, differences in regards to application like uh, it, it needs to meet a certain like criteria like uh, be a critical skill or you know uh, have a salary above 60k or 32k just like in dublin uh, okay, so yeah, critical skills definitely yes, that's that's a plus. Um, no, um, I'm not sure I got your question, Tana, regarding the the salary. Um, no, like in in Dublin, for in order to get a visa, you have to oh. uh, get an offer with a salary above thirty two. I understand. No, so there is. I don't think there is any such rules. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I don't think this is how it works um okay yeah. okay all right so yeah to, to come back to to this uh so tana you mentioned critical skills of course uh these are critical um <laughs> and i mean if if you uh you're applying for a job whether you are in switzerland or outside of switzerland it's mm -hmm. again very competitive so yes you want to have like some critical skills for the job you're gonna apply for. And um, so in order to make sure that the, the recruiters who are gonna read your CV or the machines who will read your CV will be yeah. able to, to actually capture that you are the the, the best person for, for the job yeah. or that at least you, um, you meet all the, the basic requirements. There are a few things that I think you should work on when when uh, uh, yeah. writing your CV and your commitment. How do you write a good CV for applying in, in Switzerland? Switzerland? Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, yes. So when you write your CV uh, to apply for a position in Switzerland, okay. these are the very important things that you need to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. So first. Keep it very sober. And when mm. I say that, um, uh, I guess it's quite the same in, in many different places, especially in, e in the EU. But in Switzerland, it's very important to be to the point. Um, so make sure that you keep your CV to one page. To one page? Max. Wow. Yes. Yes. Just uh, keep the essential things on your cv mm. uh, yes if it's longer than that you can almost be sure that nobody is gonna read it so be sure to really like keep it concise and to highlight the the key things that you want the recruiter uh to 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 read basically okay the key things are for example numbers achievements results and yeah. So the the I'd say in terms of the key sections, um, there are pretty similar as as you would find in the rest of, of the EU. Uh, so for example, you would have your personal data, 
uh, yeah. at the top. And um, most of the time you would uh, add a picture. So I would say mm -hmm. that the default thing would be to add a picture, but don't do it if the ad uh, mentions that there, there should be no picture. But in 95% okay. like of the time, it's appreciated when, when you add your picture. Okay, I understand. Um, yes, yeah, so picture, personal data, and then you can move to like the the next section. So professional experience, mm -hmm. uh, your education, and uh, your language skills. And I think these are extremely important, especially if you if, uh, if you apply from outside of Switzerland. And actually, even if you apply when living in Switzerland, because Switzerland is a multilingual country. Yeah. Uh, we have four national languages here. Wow. <laughs> so speaking languages is not really like a, a huge thing, unless you speak those languages that uh, we don't have a lot of here. Yeah. Uh, so this is like a tip I would definitely give to uh, non-Swiss and non-EU citizens. Mm -hmm. Make sure to highlight that you you have like these special skills, um, yeah. special language skills. Yeah. Uh, what else uh, would you have on your CVS sections? You can of course add your uh, computer skills. I think nowadays, yeah, it's it's uh, very important. Thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, these are, I'd say, the, the principal sections. So personal data, professional record, education, language skills, and computer skills. Yeah. Now, um, try to keep this very simple. For example, um, you would have your uh, the job title, the company, add also the 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 address or mm -hmm. the, the city and country of the, the yeah. company you worked for. Uh, and then I'd say add two to three bullet points for each experience you're going to list. Okay. Makes okay. sense, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and achievements and numbers. I always say achievements and numbers. Achievements yes. and numbers. Yes. Excellent. That's that's a very good point, Anna. Yes, uh, I think achievements are always a, a very good things to, yeah, to to highlight because yeah, of course you can write the job description, uh, mm -hmm. but in the end, what really matters is what it is that you did with the job. What did you bring yeah. to the company? And okay. yeah, numbers are very important. So mention that uh, fifty percent. Uh, raise in no yeah. increase in productivity that you brought or very good <laughs> and do you use cover letter there yes uh cover letter is all, always uh very important so um i'd say we can uh also stick to the same uh very first rule that we had for the cv keep it mm -hmm. sober and okay. keep it concise again yeah. uh try to write yeah the, I'd say like the the average cover letter would be one page. <laughs> yeah, it's one page. Yeah, yeah one page. So um, for the cover letter, please be sure to do your research before you start writing it. When yeah. I say that, um, I mean go to the company's website um, and read also the the job post, the job ad, uh, like. Mm -hmm. when great uh, <laughs> attention. Make sure that that you fully understand what, what are the requirements and that you yeah. fully understand what it is that the company does. Yeah. Um, and yeah, not only the, the, the company in itself in terms of, of uh, operations, but try also to understand the context, the industry, and uh, the most important, in my view, the values of the company. Yeah. Exactly. Bring some, you know, like uh, I always say, SWOT. Uh, it's the, the strange weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and how you can add value, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Position yourself um, towards this, this uh, company and this role. And when writing your cover letter, I think mm -hmm. it's always a good rule. Um, 
at least in Switzerland, it's quite the standard to start your cover letter with something about the company, then something about you, mm. <laughs> and then finish with like a combo of both, like how you're going nice. to everything together. I think that's that's yeah uh, something that usually works well. Okay. Uh, so keep in mind that it's not the cover letter is not only about yourself. Uh, yeah. Don't forget to mention the company. <laughs> yeah, and it's the time to make them also feel that that you know what it is that they do and that that yeah. you really see a fit. Yeah, very good. And do you see the Swiss market open to foreigners? Do you think they? Yeah. Do, do you see a lot of foreigners working in Switzerland? Yes. Yes. So we do have a lot of foreigners in Switzerland in general. Uh -huh. um, I think like 25% of the the uh, residents uh, are foreigners. So, mm. so yes, it is a very multicultural country. It's also a very small country. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yes, uh, foreigners are different, definitely welcome. And again, I will repeat it, uh, the thing that is very important in order for foreigners to come and work uh, in Switzerland is mm -hmm. you have these critical skills. Okay. Yes. But uh, if you have these critical skills, uh, if you are, uh, if you have that the, the right language that, that a job requires, or if mm -hmm. you have a very special uh, skill, technical skill, uh, that is difficult to find on the, the current market, then mm -hmm. yes, we definitely have a shot. About critical skills, I'd like to say maybe this. Um, I would recommend everybody to go and look at the kind of industries that are prominent mm -hmm. in Switzerland mm -hmm. and then see if these are like areas where, where they believe they can bring value. So for mm -hmm. example, in Switzerland we have um, uh, different different industries that that uh, really uh, are are big, uh, mm. such as the banking industry, uh, the pharma industry. We're also very strong with uh, services. So, for example, mm -hmm. insurances, and mm -hmm. uh, then what else? Of course, there's also a lot of like technology going on here. So I say, like, of course, we are always in need of engineers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure, but everywhere I in the world, yeah, <laughs> that's a common trend, right? Especially with with uh, how how fast uh, everything moves, like, and, yeah. and it becomes more and more present in our lives, and yeah, in our jobs. So. Yeah, I, I'd say if you're interested in in coming to Switzerland. Do your research first. Look at the industries that that uh, are kind of um, available on the market. Check the jobs and see, you know, if you see a fit with your experience. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if you if you see that there are things you are interested in, but that you don't necessarily uh, meet all the requirements, mm -hmm. consider maybe taking extra courses, uh, either online training or even in-person trainings, if these yeah. even still exist. I don't know. <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't think so. And every time someone asks me about trainings, I always say, go to uh, institutions in the country they are you know like searching for and then do online courses in the country so if you're interested in go to switzerland go to institutions or uh, universities or even colleges that are offering online courses and apply for these courses yes yeah that uh, that's an excellent recommendation indeed yeah. how how are the cultural differences how it's uh, the swiss culture right so the swiss culture I'd say is an interesting one. So if I compare it with with the Irish culture, what I know of it, yeah. um, <laughs> it's definitely I'd say less festive in a way. <laughs> yes. So the Swiss know how to laugh, but usually uh, and especially uh, in a professional setting, the Swiss person will like display quite a lot of I like to say professionalism. 
and yeah, um, yeah uh, it's it's um, it's very straight to the point, right? Straightforward. Straight to the point, and I'd say uh, quite formal as well, mm. uh, okay. especially you know um, at the first, um, you know. Um, how do you say that? Meetings the, or the first meetings, contact, yeah. right? The first contact can be yeah. quite formal. And you need to get to know people before it usually gets like less formal and so right. yeah. which means which means interviews have to be really formal. Every yeah. time you contact a recruiter, Swiss recruiter has to be super formal. Yeah. Absolutely. So um yes, for example, it's it's true that in in the in Ireland, you would you would say hi Tana, right? Uh, yeah. Hi Tana, or maybe dear Tana. But in yeah. Switzerland, don't do this. Like, please go for the formal uh, thing. So you would say, uh, dear Miss Storani, or yeah. Ah, I understand. Right? Okay, um, surnames. Yes, yes, surnames. Um, Very yeah. good. Very it's good. An important point, I'd say, uh, make sure. You you start on the right food and <laughs> very good and do switzerland use linkedin to recruit oh, yes absolutely yes so of course switzerland uh, uses linkedin um as well as other platforms uh -huh. but yeah i think i think linkedin is definitely like the yeah the, the main platform for recruiting. really is there any other job boards Use. Yes, of course, there are, you know, there is Indeed, for example, and there are also some uh, Swiss ones, some local mm -hmm. ones. Uh, I can send you the links afterwards. Yes. For example, I'd love to. Yes. Uh, do you want me to, to name a few already? or yeah, If you want, yes. Yeah. So it depends as well if you have, in in which part of Switzerland you you apply in. Okay. Because, uh, so as I mentioned it, uh, we have four national languages. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't have four different cultures, but still, like there are some specificities based on. Uh, based on see. So, for example, if you apply uh, in the the French speaking part of Switzerland, where I am currently. Uh, there is a nice platform called jobop.ch. Okay. And uh, yes, this is a Swiss made uh, website. Nice. <laughs> well, um, and yeah, for the other regions, I'll have a look again uh, to make sure mm -hmm. I'm on the right list because I'm not 100% sure. But okay. the, the one thing that is 100% sure is that LinkedIn and Indeed. For example, uh, oh, right. options for like very good, very good. So and I would definitely recommend that you go for these. Very recommend. good. And how how is how is uh the the cost of living? How is mm -hmm. to rent uh, an apartment yes. in Switzerland? How much is like a, a coffee or tea? Or if you go to the to the supermarket, how much you spend to buy bread? Yes. That's that's a good point, Anna. Because indeed, like uh, I hear a lot uh, that you know, oh wow, you live in Switzerland, you must be so rich. Like uh, yes, everybody uh, thinks that so great there and blah and blah. So uh, yes, salaries are uh, quite high, but again, it, it depends on on your job, right? Like in every country. Uh, if you go, uh, if you are a private banker, or if you are like in a, a different uh, different job, maybe you won't be making the same salary. So there is no, there is there isn't one rule uh, for this. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, uh, the salaries can uh, are higher than than uh, the the ones in the in the countries uh, near Switzerland. Uh, mm -hmm. However, the cost of living is extremely high, so be ready <laughs> right. because the salary is not everything. <laughs> What's the minimum salary there? Yeah, so there is no such thing as a minimum salary. However, yes. Mm. Uh, however, uh, there are some, um, how do we call these, like uh, industry-related guidelines uh that's okay. that some rules depending yeah on the industry 
Nice. Um, yeah. Uh, so one thing that I believe you should really keep in mind uh, is that yes, so your salary can be higher than the one you're making in 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 uh, another country, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, however, keep in mind that. Uh, once you get your salary, you have a lot of things to pay when you want to live in Switzerland. Exactly. Nothing is free. So, oh. for example, uh, health insurance. In many mm. countries, health insurance is kind of, you know, like a basic thing that you yeah. just, you know, can enjoy for free. Yeah. It's not the case. It's not the case here in Switzerland because uh, mm. health insurance uh, is mandatory. So, of course, you have to get one. However. Mm -hmm. uh, it's at your own cost, so you pay for it uh, in full, <laughs> and it is very expensive. So every so it's month, mandatory and you pay. Yes, and, and expensive. Yeah. So yeah, make sure you you do all the calculations before accepting. Uh, and how much is that? <laughs> well, it depends. It depends because you can uh, you can go for for like a, a very basic one, or you can go for a premium one. And uh, yeah, uh, like two thousand euros. No, not a thousand euros per month. Well, you can get to that if you really want to. Uh, oh. But uh, I'd say on average, it's about like five hundred francs per month for like the basic health insurance mm -hmm. uh, package. Yeah, um, oh, so that's five hundred. So your salary must be something like. Like a good five thousand. Well, yeah. Ideally, you want to to go for that or uh, even more. Um, yes. Good. Uh, in terms of taxes, so Switzerland uh -huh. is not that bad, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. it's not I know. Bad. <laughs> but uh, be careful because Switzerland has other specificities. Uh, it is a um, country made of cantons, and we have. Uh, I'm going to double check that before I say a number because I don't remember, but I think we have 26 contents. Let me check. What is contents? I'll tell you. It's regions, basically. Um, hmm. Yes, 26. I was right. Yes, I can, I I can see that. Counties, like, uh, like states. It's like counties, exactly. It's like ah. small states. Uh -huh. So I'm going to say that. Um, yes, yeah, so... But then uh, there isn't one rule for Switzerland because Switzerland is actually a country made of 26 little cantons. So cantons are like small regions, uh -huh, uh -huh. like small states that uh -huh. uh, together, um, yeah, together uh, make Switzerland. And, and each one have its different rules. Yes, they all have different rules. So there are some rules that that uh, like some federal rules that work for all contents, but then there are some extra specificities for each different content. Interesting. So make sure to you know look at these specificities, these specificities where you're gonna apply. Yeah. Very nice. Nice to know. So um, health insurance is you you pay at your own cost. And uh, each uh, county have different rules and taxation as well. Yes, that's correct. Oh my god! And um, what else? So there are four languages, and <laughs> LinkedIn indeed is the most used ones. One to two pages CV, and be formal. What else? Any other tip would like to give to job seekers? Yes, so there are some more general ones that I'm sure like job seekers uh, already found on your website, Tana, but I uh -huh. can never emphasize enough the power of keywords. Yeah. Uh, and keywords are so important for your CV, for your cover letter, for your LinkedIn profile, for everything. Yeah. So please make sure that whenever you're going to apply for a job, Make sure that in your documents, so in your CV and cover letter, you use the same keywords as they appear in the job description. That's super important. Very good. Even with your LinkedIn profile. Of course, you're not going to change your LinkedIn profile every time you apply for, for a new yeah. position, right? However, yeah. 
make sure that you find the right keywords for the industry you're, you're interested in or for the even like if you're really targeting one company specifically yeah. try to understand their language and and make sure that your profile is also in that language in a way okay i understand now maybe one thing important for switzerland since we're uh, talking about languages yeah um, i told you that there are four languages in switzerland yes. and sometimes job posts are in german in french in english in italian or what not uh -huh. <laughs> sure that when you apply for a position you apply in the same language that the, mm. the, the job post okay very good which uh, means if you don't speak the language maybe you shouldn't apply exactly and that's usually quite a good filter because maybe if you don't speak german you're not going to read uh, an ad in German. Exactly. But don't Google translate it and then apply in English. That could be that could be weird. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Very good. And how are interviews there? Yeah, interviews, okay. So again, you know, interviews can really vary from one company to another, from one industry to another. Uh, it also depends on, on what kind of jobs you're applying mm -hmm. to. Is it like a technical job? Is it more mm -hmm. like uh, people soft skill job um, so my experience with interviews is that it can go very well <laughs> like everyone yeah. so relax be confident but do your research again yeah. come prepared to an interview again Switzerland is a very competitive um, job market mm -hmm. so Make sure that you will stand out. So are, are uh, the structure of interviews the same as the structures we had in Ireland? Because you used to interview for the BLPs and mm -hmm. all the sales people in LinkedIn. So, sure. you know, you remember we used the um, competence-based questions. Yes. Would be the same in Switzerland as well, but they use the same structure. Yeah. Well. Tada, that's a very good question because it really depends on the industry. And mm -hmm. the yeah. um, okay. for example, I used to work in, in uh, universities. So of course the interviews there uh, in, in different. public organizations yeah. are <laughs> from the ones you will have at Google Zurich, for example. Yeah. So make sure that you check again the company's website because most companies actually have like a an interview section, a career section, where you can find tips on how to get prepared. Yeah. And okay. so go there and, and, and really use that. Um, now in terms of like, um, yeah. And it, do, you, do you think it's okay to ask the recruiter uh, any tips in regards to interview or it's too, it's not formal enough or? Do it formally. Of course you can do it. The way I would do it is the way I do it when, when yeah. I interview, uh, so when the person contacts me to say, hey, I uh, would like to schedule an interview with you next week, whatever, I will, of course, reply uh, formally, uh, dear Miss or Mr. Blah, uh, thank you so much, mm -hmm. uh, everything, you know, I'm thrilled or whatever you want to say. And then I would always add, is there anything I can prepare in advance or do you have any questions mm -hmm. to to yeah how the, how to get prepared for that interview and the other thing i find very important is that sometimes the person who contacts you is not necessarily the person you're going to interview with so make yeah. sure you uh, you take that opportunity to ask so is there anything i can i can uh, prepare in advance and could you please share with me the the names of of the people the people i'm going to interview with very um, good I find that yeah. very yeah, it's usually very powerful because then you can yeah. these people on LinkedIn, for example, yeah, exactly, and understand more about them. Of course, it's important to understand the person, but also about their teams. Uh, maybe the the added descriptions of their job. Yeah. Um, so use everything you can to come super prepared to that interview. And yeah, oh, thank you. Hello. Thank you very much, Nadia. Thank you for being here, sharing your, your information, your knowledge, experience. Any final tips or any anything you'd like to tell you know, our international professionals? Yes, one final tip. 
So, of course, you can do everything right, but there is one thing that you should never forget. Be yourself and stick to your values. Because, exactly. you know, in the end of the, at the end of the day, yeah, what matters is that you are in a place and in a job where you feel good and where you can yeah. thrive. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Guys, I hope you liked and I see you in the next video. Bye. Absolutely. Bye-bye.